everybody, it's Edie and I'm here today because I have just made a homemade jelly plate. Now this is supposed to be a permanent jelly plate. It does not have to be refrigerated and um, it's, it's got plasticizer in it so it's not going to start to deteriorate or melt or whatever happens to the average homemade jelly plate. This is supposed to be more like the real jelly plate jelly plate um, so I actually got the recipe and the directions from a fellow youtuber Lindsay she's known as the frugal crafter here on YouTube and uh, I will be sure to link her video down below in the description section uh, the video that I found with the recipe and her talking about her making the permanent jelly plate. She's also gone through and been so gracious to answer all of the questions that she's gotten and she even replied to me a couple of times so thank you Lindsay. So the deal with this jelly plate is that it's supposed to be permanent. It's got a plasticizer in it. So we've taken the gelatin um, you know for the jelly plate and we've added other things to it besides just water to then make it a plastic substance. It is no longer just gelatin and water. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about my experience and uh, maybe some what not to do's. <laughs> because if you've seen any of my videos or my, any of my live streams or anything, you know that I learn by mistake and I have to mess everything up at least once and I'm really good about telling you what not to do. So um, let me first talk a little bit about what goes into this jelly plate. You can see it's still wrapped here. I haven't um, unmolded, I guess. I haven't taken it out of the container yet. It's been in my refrigerator um, and I don't even know what to expect here. I haven't opened it. I haven't peeked or anything. So we're going to be surprised together. I hope it worked. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the ingredients. First of all, you need plain gelatin, plain unflavored gelatin. Ooh, I'm shadow here. Uh, it's, I got Knox brand. I think it might be the only brand on the market. I'm not even sure. But you want the original gelatin unflavored. And you can get it in the little packets like this. This box came with four envelopes like this. Um, or you can also buy the containers got like 36 packs in it. I don't know. The recipe called for seven. So I got the two boxes of four, which gave me eight packets. I still have one left over. And I got this at Walmart in the baking aisle. That was one of the things that I wanted to kind of cover here is because I had a hard time finding uh, the glycerin stuff. So I wanted to talk to you about where to find all of these items. So the unflavored gelatin you can find in the baking aisle. It will be with the Jello and, you know, the other baking goods and things like that. Um, and I got mine at Walmart and it was $1.25 for each box. So I spent $2.50 on the gelatin. And then um, you also need isopropyl alcohol. I had this already. You can use 70%. I had 91%, so that's what I used. Um, you can find this in the pharmacy of your local Walmart or Walgreens or you know pretty much anywhere that sells pharmaceutical stuff you can find regular rubbing alcohol isopropyl alcohol and then you also need glycerin now this was the thing that I had the hardest time finding strangely enough I found this at Michaels and it was in the cake decorating area which I found kinda weird once I read about it uh, and, and learn what it was but anyway whatever so but it was kind of expensive at Michaels and even with the coupon you know I wasn't sure so then I did a little bit of research and still couldn't figure out where to find it out I thought maybe it would be with the soap making supplies because you know there's glycerin soap and all I don't know so I went to Walmart you know today whenever I got the gelatin and I was I was googling while I was at Walmart and it said to look in the pharmacy so I went over and I asked the pharmacist and this is found in the pharmacy it's glycerin uh, it's got a lot of uses on the back here there's like it's weird the things that you can do with glycerin I had no idea so if you find a bottle of glycerin like read the back of it um, but it's in the pharmacy and in my Walmart it is with the first aid supplies so find a place with a pharmacy and go ask your pharmacist which aisle it's on because this will be in your pharmacy. This was $3.50 for a six fluid ounce bottle and this is the size that you need to make 
the recipe. Um, so it, now there are a couple of things that I'm going to talk about with this as well, but if you're going to make the recipe exactly the way Lindsay has it posted on the Frugal Crafter video, then you just need one bottle of this. However, she did say that if you have enough glycerin, you don't need the alcohol. And I really wish I had just bought more glycerin because uh, the alcohol really freaking stinks. But um, you need a half cup of glycerin. So if you don't want to use the alcohol, you'll need three bottles of this. And that, that might get a little bit pricey. You, I mean, you might want to just buy a freaking jelly plate. I don't know. So anyway, um, yeah, glycerin, pharmacy. Mine was with the first aid stuff. Now, let's talk about the actual recipe. You need seven packs of the unflavored regular gelatin. You need a cup and a half of boiling water. You need one cup of the isopropyl alcohol and a half cup of glycerin. So it's one and a half cups water plus one and a half cups combination here. However, Lindsay said if you have enough glycerin, you don't need the alcohol. So you could do it with one and a half cups water, one and a half cups glycerin. I did the alcohol version, so I don't know 100% if that works, but she said that she found that out, so maybe you could pop over to Lindsay's video and leave her a comment and ask her about it if you have concerns. Um, like I said, I would recommend using the glycerin and no alcohol because the alcohol is so, so stinky. Oh my god. And we'll talk about that in a little bit too. Um, okay, so yeah, that's it. That's all you need. Seven cups, I mean seven packets, cup and a half water cup of alcohol, half cup of glycerin. So, uh, you know with Jello, you take your Jello packet and you have a cup of boiling water and you have to mix the cup of boiling water into the gelatin, get it all melty, and then you pour your cup of cold water in and put it in the fridge, right? So that's how regular Jello works. Yeah, not so much with this. And let me tell you what happened. So I had my, I had this container that I didn't want to mess anything else up. I didn't know what kind of reaction I was going to get. I didn't want to use my regular utensils for fear of getting some weird toxic concoction in my pots and on my spoons. So I was really not wanting to have to use any of my um, cooking utensils, but we'll talk about that as well. So I had my little container here and I had a spoon that I was willing to throw away and I put my seven little packets in here and I had my water all boiling and I measured out my cup and a half of boiling water and I poured it in and I started mixing it and it already started to get a little bit hard. And so I was like, what is going on here? Because normally, you know, Jello, it melts, man. You start stirring that stuff around and it disintegrates. Not this. So then I read the directions. <laughs> which I don't know if Lindsay gave this direction or not. She may have, and I just didn't pay attention, which is totally likely, but you know, whatever. So uh, I read the directions and every one of these little directions says to put this gelatin on the cold stuff. You mix it into cold and then you add the hot to it after it's already dissolved. Okay, but so like I didn't read the directions, so I didn't know that. So whatever, okay, so I've got this clump starting to happen. And I just figured, okay, well, you know, I'll just, I'll work it in. I'll stir it enough. It'll, it'll dissolve. It'll be okay. I'll, I'll work it in. So I then poured in my half cup of glycerin, which was cold and stirred that just a tiny bit. And then I added my one cup of alcohol. This is what happened. And when I say this is what happened, I mean like instantly that clump happened in the photo. You can see the clump there. As soon as I poured the alcohol in and started to stir it, it like clumped around the spoon and it immediately started to solidify, but just in that one spot. And so then I'm like, oh my God. So I start stirring a little bit faster and it starts to solidify weirdly in a few places. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? What did I do wrong? So uh, I figured I had totally ruined it. And I honestly thought I was just going to have to go out, buy more stuff, and start all over again. However, 
I remembered Lindsay saying that once your jelly plate gets all gooky or if it doesn't mold right the first time, you just melt it back down and do it again. So I figured, well, if you can melt it down, then you can put it back in the freaking pot before it's solid the first time. So I took it and I scraped it and it was already starting to solidify on the bottom. So there was a lot of scraping action. It took me a long time. Pain in my ass, but I got it done. So I scraped it all out and I put it back into a pot this time. I mean, so like I don't have a microwave. I don't own a microwave, so I had to do mine on the stovetop. Lindsay does hers in the microwave, which is probably so much easier, but I don't have a microwave, so I did mine on the stove. So I took my pot and I put it down, put it on like, uh, I don't know, I guess medium. And I scraped and scraped and scraped and got it all back in there. And then I still had this big freaking chunk floating around in there. So then I'm like taking the back of the spoon and rubbing it on the clump and trying to work it back in. Finally, I did get all of the clumps worked back in and I got it all melted down and it was nice and crystal clear. Uh, well, kind of yellowy, but clear. So uh, I melted it all back down, got everything incorporated the way it was supposed to originally look, I think. And then I poured it into my container. So then I had to put it in my refrigerator and I checked on it in a, probably 15 minutes after I put it in my fridge and my entire fridge stunk like alcohol. First of all, my whole kitchen stunk. I had to put a mask on. I had to open the windows and turn the fan on. It was a whole big ordeal and it stunk. So again, you might want to use just glycerin. But anyway, uh, so then uh, I decided that I didn't want that smell permeating my refrigerator. So I used Glad Press and Seal and just covered the top of my container here which you know I know I get condensation when I do that and I'm not really sure how that's going to affect this so we're going to see but the big unveiling is about to happen so then I let it sit in my refrigerator for about uh, four hours I think you're only supposed to leave it for three but I had stuff to do so I let it sit until I was ready and now brrr, ksh, it is time for the big unveiling I know I'm talking a mile a minute I know I'm sorry but I got a lot to tell you and I want to see if it works so I don't want this video to run on forever so I'm just going to take my Glad Press and Seal and lift it off. And I can see that I've got some puddling of the condensation here. But I'm going to try and uh, wipe that off and see what happens. So let me just get a paper towel. I'm just going to try and like soak up some of that water. And see if it left like permanent marks. Oh yeah, it did. It left permanent marks. Crap! All right, so it looks like I'm going to be melting it down again and pouring it again. You know, maybe I shouldn't... Ugh, I'm soaking up alcohol. Okay, so maybe I shouldn't soak up any of that. I'll just drip that back in there. Okay, um, now what? All right, so I'm going to try and unmold this. All right, so I'll learn from my mistakes. Do not cover your jelly plate. Put it in the fridge and just deal with the stink. I don't know, maybe you want to like clean out your refrigerator that day and have nothing else in there. Because I don't want this like in my food. I, I, I was worried that the smell was going to permeate my food. So, clean out your refrigerator. Don't have anything in there. Put this in there. Don't cover it because then you get the condensation and then shit doesn't work right. Okay, so, now I need trusty exacto. Because I don't think this is just going to... Yeah, that's not, not happening. So, going to... Run my exacto down the side here. I probably need a longer knife because I don't think I'm going to reach the bottom. Oh, and I wanted to tell you that I got this little container here from the thrift store for 75 cents because, again, I didn't want to mess anything up. I didn't know what was going to happen with this thing. So, um, you can, I think Lindsay used a, one of those box frames, those clear plastic box frames. And she's, I remember her saying you have to kind of get underneath it. Let me, um, let me get, a, I think a pilot knife will work. Just going to go around the edge again to make sure I got all the way to the bottom. And you have to kind of lift it to get the suction released. Once, once it starts to release, it should pop out. There we go. Ooh, it is very, very firm. Squishy. Okay. <laughs> All right. So mine had this little design on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. But. So I got that design here on the bottom. And then I've got this mistake here where I put the 
stuff on there. Probably not such a good idea. But, oh well, whatever. Okay, so I'm just going to try it and see what happens. I can remelt it and do it again tomorrow, I guess. Okay, so now I'm still really smelling the alcohol. I'm hoping that once it airs out for a while, it won't stink anymore. But right now, it's my whole studio smells like alcohol. Okay, um, jelly plate, I went to the jelly plate website and it recommends laying your jelly plate on a piece of regular paper so that you don't get any porous marks or whatever. So there's that. Okay, so look at how, like, this is sturdy. It's not, it's squish and it's firm. It's really firm. And, uh, Lindsay explains what it is. It's a plasticizer. She talked to a scientist friend and she got, like, all in-depth and knew what she was doing and everything. Um, and... It, when you add the alcohol and the glycerin to the gelatin, it becomes a plastic and not just food. <laughs> All right, so let's test this baby out. Now, I the reason I did not want to buy a jelly plate is because I honestly don't think I'm a jelly plate kind of girl. I don't art that way. I don't make a whole bunch of pages and just have them around. I hate having pre-made pages. My art journal is white. It's white, white, white because I love the blank page. I don't like pre-made papers. I have a bunch of scrapbook paper and I very rarely ever use it. And if I do, it's just for texture in the background. I always paint over it. So, um, I don't think I'm a jelly plate kind of girl. However, when you can make one this cheap, I figure why not. And I wanted to just see if I could do it. Um, now, I do think that I may do the jelly plate for individual works of art. So like when I'm getting ready to do something, I think it would be great to do a background and then clean it and put it away and only use it when I need it, when I'm ready. But I, I don't know, we're gonna see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with it and see how it goes. I may end up being a jelly lover, jelly plate lover, whatever. <laughs> All right, so this is neon yellow. I don't even know how much paint to use. Doesn't look like they use too much paint on the videos that I've seen. And then you brayer it on. Oh, I think I need more paint. Why is mine not smooth? Like theirs looks so smooth when they put the... Uh-oh. Maybe I didn't put enough paint. More paint. So I guess there's a learning curve to using the jelly plate that I don't understand yet. <laughs> I'm still learning. I'm just playing. I've only watched a handful of jelly plate videos because, like I said, I'm not a jelly plate kind of girl. Now, this right here, I'm going to get that on every single one of my prints, which is not cool, which is why I'm going to have to remelt it and do it again. Oh, okay. So, um, now you take a piece of plain paper. I don't know if I told you the dimensions. This is 7.5 by 8.5. That's what size my jelly plate is because that's what size my container was. Now, if I really like this, I may go find a cheapy, larger container and try it again. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, oh that's cool. But see, I'm not going to want that every time. So I'm going to have to remelt it. There's no getting around it. Although, you know, I'm going to try the bottom too. Because the bottom may be okay. And then I may not have to remelt it. Because it really stinks. Oh my god. Okay. So I've got my first color down. I'm just going to leave that yellow. And now I'm going to add some orange. Woo! That's bright. And I think there's something to the pressure that you apply too. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but... The, the pressure that you apply as you're rolling out your paint. I don't know. Just play with it. I, maybe it's just mine that I'm... Or maybe it's just because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> oh, I just hit the camera. Sorry. If I made you dizzy, sorry. Oh, I'm trying to, like, drag the paint over. Oh, there we go. Okay, now I'm getting some nice coverage. See, I'm getting lines in there, too. I don't know if that's just for me pressing too hard or from the jelly plate being not perfectly flat. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to make some texture. I just have this piece of mesh stuff here. I'm going to like press that on, lift it off, and again, and again. I think I actually like it better with my hand. Got a better print. Do that again. How long does this stay wet? Like, how long does the paint stay wet on here, too? That's a good question, because I'm the kind of... Look at that stamp. That's so cool. Oh, my God. Okay. I don't know. I'm just... I Like, I have to clean my supplies in between because I don't want the paint to melt on them. I mean, to melt, to dry on them. Okay, so now I'm just going over the yellow. And I can't see if I'm lining it up exactly. Um, so we're just going to take chances. And now my paper is kind of wet, and so I'm getting some crinkles here. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, yeah, you can see them. See that? <sighs> don't know. Is that supposed to happen? Am I just am I supposed to let the paper dry in between? See, I need to do my jelly research. <gasps> oh, that's so pretty. <gasps> Ew, that's pretty. I like it. Okay. Um, now I think I will do some pink. Because I love the pink. Hot pink. Neon pink. Sizzling pink. <laughs> Sizzling. Oh shit, is it not open? <laughs> not open. Hold on. Pause. Scissors. Something. See, this is... Where are my scissors? I don't even know. They're, in, they're not in the drawer. I think I used them for something. Ooh, see, I just almost cut my finger. <sighs> Do not follow my example. <laughs> Be more careful in your space. Ooh, that's so pretty. Oh, and then i got to show you the paint that I got today. Okay. Ooh, that's so pretty. So pretty! I'm going to love it. Whoa, I just totally rolled off the jelly plate. See, I think this technique too works better. The dragging of the brayer instead of the rolling. I don't like the rolling, but I like the dragging of the brayer. Rolling, rolling one direction only. Okay, now let's do some other... See, just from cleaning off my brayer, look how pretty on the paper towel. And I'm just rolling to clean it. Oh, so pretty. All right, um, now I'm going to take this. I'm going to do some bubble wrap. And then I have this thing. It actually came out of a dishwasher you know the basket for your silverware it came out of one of those so I'm just gonna do that oh I think it's twisting and I don't want it to twist uh oh it's stuck uh oh hmm let's do this oh I'm gonna have a fingerprint in it <laughs> Oh well. I have to move this stuff over here. This. And then here. Okay. And again, I'm just rolling over it to get the paint off. Ugh, still not off. But look at that. Look at how cool. See, I clean my stuff in between because I don't like the paint to just sit on there. Because I'm afraid that it's going to mess it up and then it, I won't get a good mark. Okay. All right. So, now I'm laying my paper over and I think I got it crooked. But whatever. Ew, it's so pretty. So now I covered up the the orange, which I really liked the orange. Hmm, let's see here. And you can kind of see the 
bubble wrap, but not a whole lot. I don't know. I think it looks better on camera than it looks in person. And I'll post pictures of all these at the end. Okay, uh, now I'm going to clean off my jelly plate. And you just spray it with water. And of course my spray bottle is almost empty. Hmm. There we go. Just had to turn it. Okay, so you just spray it with water and then, ugh, you're supposed to be able to just wipe. Maybe I need to, um, let's do another print first. I think I still have too much paint on here to just wipe. Ugh, that's really wet. There, that's much better. That'll be easier to clean. So there's that. Cool. All right, wash it again. I mean, spray it again. And uh, Lindsay also said that you can take, or no, it wasn't Lindsay that said this. It was on the Jelly Plate site that you can take hand sanitizer and you can clean your Jelly Plate with hand sanitizer. And especially like the edges, you can just clean it with hand sanitizer. Or you can clean the whole thing with hand sanitizer which I will probably do because they made it look so easy. Like it just wiped right off for them. I'm struggling. Maybe I let the paint dry too much. I don't know. You can see the outline of where my jelly plate was laying. That's the mineral oil, I guess, from the glycerin. So uh, just keep that in mind. You need to protect your work surface. All right. So now I want to try this side because I've got that one little circle there and there's some texture from the bottom of my container. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so I think I'm gonna do blue first. Still working with the neons. Yeah, the rolling in one direction is definitely better than trying to roll back and forth. So just a tip for those of you just starting out with the jelly plate. And they say you don't need as much paint, but I swear I'm using just as much paint, if not more, than I would use regularly. Okay, so there's that. Now let's make some, I'm going to actually roll this little wheel across here. Let's see what that does. This is just a Lego toy that I stole from Christopher. And you can make marks with anything like anything I've seen people use all kinds of stuff okay now I need um, let's see I think I'm just gonna use this paper here I'm trying to line it up and you start from the center and press out oh pretty now see I do have the one circle there but I think I can deal with that a lot better than dealing with that other thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be worth the hassle of melting it back down. Because you're supposed to like cut it into little chunks and then melt it back down. So I'm just going to wipe it. Oh, maybe not. Okay, let's see here. Now I'm going to do some green. These colors are so pretty. And I'm just using the Folk Art, Craft Smart, and Americana craft paints. And they're all neon. All the ones I'm using today are neon. I don't know what it is. You know, I'm not even a neon kind of girl. Normally, I don't like neon. But here recently, I'm seeing it everywhere because, you know, the 80s are so back. And so, of course, that means neon is back and I'm seeing it everywhere and I am in love 
with this neon pink. I, you're not even going to believe it when I show you how many different neon pinks I have. Because I'm loving it right now. And I always liked neon pink, but I'm liking all of the other neon colors too. Okay, um, let's see. Let's do, so I did this already, so now let's do this. I should like clean it off maybe get some of the paint off so I get a better impression it looks like little flowers or gears it's cool so look around your house and look at all the cool weird different things you've got that could make marks all right now I'm gonna oh did I show you the first one this was the first print with the wheel going one way now let's Make it this way. You just, you don't have to apply a whole lot of pressure. I'm discovering that. Pull it up. Ta-da! Oh, that's so pretty! I like it. Okay, cool. Alright, I think... I think I'm going to stick with the bottom here. I'm going to give this, so far, a 10 out of 10. I'm really liking it. I'm really happy with it. I didn't think I was going to like the jelly plate, but I'm telling you, I really like those prints a lot. And I like the different textures. The, I mean, not the textures, the different um, designs that I was getting. And I know that I have a whole bunch of useless crap in my house that makes cool designs, and I know you do too. So... Go check around your house. Oh, and let's see. Let's do the grand total for how much my jelly plate cost me. Draw my hand. So I bought two boxes of the gelatin, a dollar twenty-five each. So that's two fifty. And then the glycerin was three fifty. Yeah, three fifty. So two fifty and three fifty is six. And then I already had. The alcohol, but if you have to go buy alcohol, we'll just say two dollars. Yeah, we'll say two dollars. So eight dollars. And I didn't have a container, so I had to buy a container. My container cost me 75 cents. If you already have something that you can use, then use it. Go check your thrift store. Um, go watch Lindsay's video because she uses a one of those clear shadow box like frames. That's what she used for her jelly plate. Um, now, the jelly plate people recommend that you store your jelly plate in the container that it came in. So that's what I'll be doing, and I will not be covering it. It does not have, I mean, yes, I will be covering it because it does not have to be refrigerated. Um, so I'm just going to plop it right back down in here, make sure it lays nice and flat. And I think that Lindsay said that hers shrunk enough that she could get it back down in here. So you know what? Mine's not really going back in here neatly. And you want to lay it flat. And you want to keep it dry, and you do not want to lay it on any porous surfaces because it will pick up the dents, the indents, and the texture of whatever you lay it on. And then that will be a permanent fixture on your plate. Okay, there we go. So, homemade jelly plate is supposed to be non-refrigeration needed. Did that even make sense? No refrigeration needed. So, I'll check back in with you and let you know how that's going. If you have questions, leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to go check out Lindsay, the Frugal Crafters video. It's linked down below as well. Uh, my new blog is coming. It will be www.mixedmediology.com. It's not set up yet. I am still learning how to do it. <laughs> but it will be coming. So for right now, visit my blog at www.lifebytheseatofmypants.wordpress.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share because you don't want to miss out on all the cool stuff that I do and all the great mistakes that I make and I can help you to not make the same mistakes because you know I have to screw everything up at least once so if you have any questions leave it in the comment section below thanks so much to all of the new subscribers and thanks to those of you who share my videos and pass it along to your friends I'll be back on Thursday with Thrift Shop Thursday thanks for being here and I'll see you then Mwah. bye